Welcome to the Digital Maddie Show. This is a platform where I share my knowledge on video creation, digital marketing, chatbot marketing, and how to grow your business through video making. I also invite many influencers and digital marketers on this show and ask amazing questions to extract their secrets of business. Let's get started with your host. Hi, my name is Mithil, and I'm a YouTube and video creation coach, and I help aspiring video influencers to create and monetize their content through video making. Today we have an amazing guest on our show. She is into brainstorming, mind mapping, gratitude, affirmations, and much more. She is already into the studio. Let's welcome her. So let's welcome uh, to our show, Jane. Uh, let me introduce herself. Uh, Jane McCarthy is specialized in mind mapping and affirmation. That's one of my favorite topics uh, to create a forward looking action plan with a fresh perspective. She provides the freedom and the space to explore a vision for individuals, departments, or even companies. She is currently the chief brainstormer at Jane Storms, where she connects people with their visions and provide a positive focus for their future through brainstorming and personalized interviews. So let's welcome Jane once again to our show. Thank you, Vito. That was beautiful. I loved how you described that. <laughs> you did your homework. That's great. I felt affirmed. <laughs> Most welcome. It was wonderful. So Jane, uh, let me ask you my favorite question. So can you share your favorite quote or a line that motivates you on a daily basis? So it's interesting. Uh, I live in New York. So we are living through the pandemic right now uh, in a big way. And above my computer, I have a postcard, a, a little index card, and it says, there are 86,400 seconds in a day. Use some of them to say thank you. And every single day I look at that and think, who am I going to thank today? Because we need so much gratitude to get through the days the, right now. So important. So thank you, Jane, for coming on the show. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> Most welcome. So Jane, can you share your backstory so that all the people who are listening to this episode can also connect with you? Yes, so I born and raised on Long Island. I am one of four kids. Um, my, I have two older sisters and a brother who's seven years younger. I was raised by a single mom uh, who did an amazing job with all of us. Uh, I look at it now as a co-parent um, with a loving husband. And I think, how the hell did she get through that with three teenagers in three years? And she did. And uh, I went on to work for Verizon. Uh, it started as 9X, which is our telecommunications company. I graduated on May 4th, 1986 and started the next day. And uh, I worked my way through 30 years of marketing, customer service and loyalty. And the last 18 years of my career, I ran a business to business loyalty program for Verizon. It was known as my third child. I was known as an evangelist in Verizon. I loved my job. I got to job share for 15 years. I worked on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. My job share partner worked Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And she was in Virginia and I was in New York and I was working out of my house. So I am a trailblazer for what's happening today because I've been working from home for 20 years and I've been working remote from my teams for 18 years and doing it successfully. And then in 2018, Verizon gave us, uh, I gave me what I thought was a chance of a lifetime. I was given a package to take um, 15 months pay and 15 months benefits and go figure out what I wanted to do when I grow up. And I wanted to take my passion for connecting people and ideas and my passion for coaching and my passion for moving people forward and create a space for mind mapping and affirmations in a formal way. And hence, Jane Storm. I had been at, the vendor I worked with is Kobe Marketing down in St. Petersburg, Florida. They are one of the best loyalty marketing companies in the country. And I showed up there three years ago 
and I had a team of about 12 people and I walked into the creative room and there was a huge sign and it said Jane Storm. And I said, what is that? And they said, when you show up, Jane, we don't just brainstorm, we Jane Storm. You connect people and ideas better than anybody we've ever known. And so in 2018, when I was driving around trying to figure out what the name of my company was going to be, I'm like, there is Jane Storm. That's how it all came about. And here I am today. Amazing. So uh, for me personally, it's going to be a very exciting episode because I love mind mapping and um, I love brainstorming. And uh, affirmations is a key which keeps us alive on a daily basis if we follow it in the right way. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for being on the show. So uh, Jane, when it comes to having the right, like, you know, why do we need to have the right mindset? Why it is so much important? It's interesting. Um, I'm in a, an organization called Master Networks, which is... Uh, a bunch of solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and small businesses get together and they network. And one of the things that we talk about a lot, especially right now, is the difference between abundance and scarcity. And when you come from a growth mindset, you're coming from abundance. So you're thinking differently. You are coming from a place of, instead of saying, I can't do it, you're saying, how can I do it? I am not successful, how can I get successful? I have no clients, what am I going to do to get clients? Growth mindset people pivot. They're pivoting, you're seeing it through this time more than any other time in my career. I'm seeing pivots and it's really, really cool. Yes, absolutely. So I think uh, there are, since there are two kinds of mindset, fixed mindset and growth mindset, and with the growth mindset, we can go very far. And uh, I think uh, that's the key point of, you know, transformation of your life. So uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to brainstorming, why brainstorming is the key to success? One of the things you learn as a coach is to listen and, and not give all the answers. And I think what brainstorming does is it provides other people to use their knowledge and be able to bounce ideas off of each other so that nothing is wrong. Every idea has a purpose and it may not be the idea that's used that day, but it's the jumping off point for the next idea. And it creates excitement and momentum and an opportunity for you to learn from someone else. So if you and I sat here and brainstormed, I guarantee we would learn something from each other and we'd walk away feeling more positive about it. I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with the right men's mindset and uh, if you do a lot, lot of brainstorming, I think uh, the, you know, the plan of actions that we come into accountability is very much important because that brings us to make the things done. So why accountability is important? Interesting, there's a woman named Brooke Boone who started Holy Yoga years ago. And she taught something to us. Um, I'm in an organization also called Aris Sisters. And in, the, in January, she taught me the uh, concept of force versus power. And when you think of accountability and you think of being in force, People are thinking about being defensive, waiting and seeing, covering their butts, ignoring or denying what's going on. They're saying it's not my job, right? So when you're in force, you're in defense and shame. The middle line is courage. And that's where you're starting to get to your point where you're going to have a voice and you're going to become accountable. And when you get above the line, you're in power and you're in your own power and you're teaching others their power and you're owning it, you're seeing it, you're solving it and you're doing it. And when you do that, you, you live a more joyful life because you're taking accountability and you're teaching everyone around you to be more accountable. I, re I have a 19 year old son, actually he's going to be my 19 on May 16th and Recently, he and I went to blows a little bit during this pandemic. 
And one of the things I did is I sat there. I don't, you're not going to be able to see this, but I actually made a little card. And on it, I put power at the top, courage in the middle, and force at the bottom. And I listened. And he felt heard. And our conversation and our conflict ended so much faster because I let him be heard. As a mother, I shut up and just said, I'm going to let him say what he has to say without getting defensive, without having shame, without throwing anger in there. And at the end, I can tell you that it took a couple of days, but there were affirmations, there was enlightenment, there was joy, and there was confirmation that we love each other. That can be done across the board. Maybe you're not going to do love in a corporation, but by God, Mipa, we need compassion. We need compassionate leaders. We need people to see right now how hard this is on people. And we need them to get into their power so they can then create their teams into power. Yes, I totally agree. And uh, affirmations are very powerful. And uh, since you are also an affirmation coach, uh, it's going to be best if we can know much about affirmations in detail. So, uh, Jane, how affirmations help your life? So affirmations work in so many different ways. One of the big things is that you have to believe them. And the work that we do in the Jane Storm process is there's a series of questions that are asked. And then the magic comes in the third session. And it's an affirmation story. And I don't tell a lot about it because it's the magic and and it's the gift. And I think gifts should be a surprise. But I can tell you that everybody that's gone through it has been wowed. And one of the things that comes with it are six affirmation statements. And people have to put their affirmation somewhere. And they have to be I am statements. They have to be present tense. They have to be positive. I say it again, you have to believe it. And then the most important thing is it has to be repetitive. So I had a woman call me last week and she said, I'm in a really bad place. Can you take me through the Jane Storm process? This happens to be someone I've known for 30 years. So she called me and I said, okay, we're going to go through it. She thought I was going to give her five affirmation statements that were going to say, I'm creative. I can do this. I'm a good person. I made her deep dive and she was like, oh, I said, you need to get to your subconscious because if you don't get to your subconscious, none of this is going to matter. And if you don't repeat it in your subconscious at least 10 times, as Ken Blanchard says, none of it matters. So my clients that have actually done the work, I'm seeing the shift. And it's so exciting to watch them come into their power. So exciting. Awesome. Do you use affirmations? Yes, I do. Uh, But uh, not that much. But yes, after this episode, I'm going to be religious uh, in following all those and would love to learn more about them from you. So yes, I am uh, excited. But I have I have seen the power behind affirmations and what basically affirmations do to your subconscious mind and how the universe conspires to get the things done for it. Yeah, and I think it goes back to protecting your core, right? When you protect your core at the top and then you have accountability and you have affirmations and you have all of the other pieces that I go through in the Jane Storm process, it creates a a vision for your future where you're feeling invested in yourself in a positive way. And that's where affirmations come in. Yes. So uh, you said something about Ken Blanchard also, and uh, he's one of the one of my favorite authors when it comes to one minute managers and the things yes, that we yes, have yes. Given it. yes, love him, love him. You know, I also found another quote um, recently that says, "Holding your team accountable isn't an exercise in control; it's an exercise in empowerment." Wow. And I 
thought that was so amazing for what's going on now because so many people are so scared to let their people work from home and telecommute. And from someone that did it for 20 years, I worked harder than if I had been in an office. I am a very social person. I was able to be disciplined and get the work done. And when you empower people to do it and you affirm that they can do it, they will do it. Absolutely. They need to enjoy the process. Then only they'll be able to, they'll be more eager to do the things. Yep. Yep. Great. Absolutely. So I have seen in few of your, uh, you know, courses and conferences and seminars, you do a lot of gratitude uh, related things. Mm -hmm. So how gratitude plays a vital role in your success? It goes back to, it's the healthiest of all emotions. When you have gratitude, you, you feel better. You just feel better when you have gratitude. My best story about gratitude is about Gary's hearts. So Gary is my friend, Sam Willings, um, friend from Seattle. And he lived, lives in a trailer and had had a rough life, but he designed imperfect hearts and went to Sam's father and said, I have these hearts, I love them. I need to figure out what to do with them. And she showed, his fa her father showed them to her. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. I'd have to, I'll have to take it, oh, there you go. Um, and she said, oh wow, that's the name, that's going to be the name of my podcast, Imperfection Wins. Because she believes that when you use this heart as a reminder that things don't need to have to be perfect to have meaning. So she started to talk about the hearts on her podcast. She got involved with some other groups. She came on to our sisters, told about the hearts. I've spread the word, St. Louis has spread the word across the country. In December, Gary was able to buy glasses. He did not have glasses. He was able to buy a toilet from the purchase of the hearts. She and her husband wanted to give him the money for his electricity for the rest of 2020 in December. He was so overly abundant with gratitude that he took the check and gave it to his next door neighbor because he was getting enough money in his mind from the hearts that he paid it forward to his neighbor. If that's not a lesson in gratitude, because it's about what is in our hearts and the abundance and the compassion. And we, you know, it's the tidal wave of compassion is what Sam calls it. And that is the one story I tell over and over again, because I just think it shows that you can have so little and still have so much. Yes, I totally agree. And it's an amazing story. Uh, it, it actually gave me good goosebumps. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Jane, uh, since uh, we spoke about gratitude and affirmation, so can you give some few tips related to gratitude and affirmations? So one of the things I did in a workshop recently, and it's interesting, I just sent them out yesterday, is um, I asked people to write thank you letters to themselves. And they wrote thank you letters to themselves and then they gave them to me and it's three months to the day and I mailed them out today and they're going to get those thank you letters in the mail. So writing a thank you letter is huge. Writing a thank you letter to people in your life, um, calling someone, thanking them. It goes back to um, taking the moments and knowing that most of us feel gratitude on every day. That's not unusual, but to be purposeful about it, to be purposeful. And then the other thing that I learned this week from a friend of mine named Beth Tracy is the difference between gratitude and grace. And I think that that's lacking right now. I think we have a lot of gratitude, 
grace is harder because we have to live in it without judgment. And so many of us are living in judgment. And uh, especially in the United States, there's a huge divide right now. And so now every morning I'm waking up and saying, I'm not only going to live in gratitude, but I am going to try my hardest to live in grace. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, Jane, thank you so much for, you know, giving so many values uh, to this particular episode. So uh, if people want to connect with you and know more about what you do and how uh, through you, they can transform their life. So is there a particular platform where they can just connect to you? Yes, it's janestorm.com. That's the best way to get in touch with me. Cool. That's cool. So, a positive force for your future. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, Jane, would you like to say something to our viewers before we end this episode? I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having me on and believing in the importance of affirmations and mind mapping and creating a tangible, positive outlook for people's futures. Great. Lovely. So thank you so much, Jane, for being on this show and giving so much amazing uh, you know, values and concepts related to gratitude, affirmations, and much more out of it. So thank you once again. Thank you. So we have just listened to the Digital Maddie Show with your host, Mithil Dave, and we have an amazing guest, Jane, onto our show, and she gave so much value related to affirmations, gratitude, and about mindset and brainstorming. So if you're listening to this video on YouTube, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you're listening to my podcast, subscribe to my podcast. And thank you so much, Jane, once again, for being on the show. Thank you.